Welcome, everybody, to the seventh annual Support and Successful SOS Strategies seminar, webinar, whatever you want to call it tonight on this beautiful Thursday Seven, evening. Seminar. Se the seminar. That's seminar. good. Yeah. That's good. It's a seminar. Very good. Thank you, Jonah. Uh, Joel's getting turnt for this one, you guys. He is getting turnt. So, well, the good news today is this is our eight o'clock. So we already did this webinar once today at noon. And if you're joining us for the, this is the eight o'clock uh, fun version. So if you've picked or chosen between the noon or the 8 p.m. version, uh, you have chosen correctly. You've chosen the right webinar. Congratulations. So this, this, is, the, this is the right one for you to come to, although the... The other one was also quite nice, but this is uh, quite nicer, right? So it is, the super, it is the superlative of the two webinars. So we welcome you. Yes, Donald, uh, we do have polls this time. We do, we have polls. So if you, wow, if you are coming to this webinar again, then we thank you. You must have, it must have been just so good. So, all Donald's right. Donald is a frequent flyer here with the, he's, a, the yeah, he, he's like a level seven. Webinarian. Webinarian? Webinarian. Yeah, web webinarian. I like that. A webinar. It's like you're like a librarian, but much cooler you're a webinarian, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, a couple of, uh, uh, we'll get some of the house cleaning topics out of the way real quick. I don't know what that means, but I just said it. So, uh, if, uh, so anyway, to click on that chat little button on the bottom. So we definitely encourage hanging out in the chat session. Make sure to choose panelists and attendees in the two drop down to make sure that everyone is uh, uh, seeing you. And wow, we get a lot of regulars, Steve from Australia and all these wonderful. Welcome back everybody. Welcome, introduce yourself, say hello. Uh, yes, Jason, these are dope jerseys. We wear them with pride. Uh, so again, introduce yourself, say hello. Uh, enjoy the use of the Q&A window uh, throughout the webinar. You will uh, answer, ask questions. We will do our best to answer them via text or verbally. Uh, the series of our, our softball team, with the exception of Joel, who's actually our coach today, so he wore the official coaching jersey. Uh, we, uh, we barely edged out a win against the uh, – who did we play today? I don't want to say it. <laughs> I, I could actually – I've got plenty of funnies for that one, but I'm not going <laughs> to. We'll, let, we'll is, let the audience yeah. decide. Yeah, you guys. Just let them imagine. Yeah, so we uh, we did have a softball game today. We're quite exhausted and winded, so this is our celebratory webinar for everybody. Uh, of, course we won. of course, we won. Yeah. It was a it was a close yet defining win. It's called a close yet defining win. Uh, there is also a uh, wow. Steve's right at it with the Q and A. All right, good man, good man. <laughs> so uh, there's also a, a video. Uh, choice at the top so you can kind of choose your videos however you want to have our beautiful and helpful uh, faces uh, showing uh, we actually answer that question Steve believe it or not in the scripting section so we'll definitely get to that uh, it does still hold true it is it is actually the plus minus button next to your um, your time display at the bottom and not the plus minus channel button Yes. That, is, that is true. That is true. It does hold water and we will cover that. Um, a couple of uh, other more important topics. So let's just cover the most important ones out of the gate. Uh, this is a, uh, if you uh, would like to have a few cocktails or um, I'm drinking Coke Zero and being boring, but everyone else, feel free to have some cocktails and uh, make sure that you pay close attention to our drinking game rules. Uh, this is a critical part of the webinar. And uh, so a couple of, uh, some of the obvious ones we'll knock out. If we do use the word help within the webinar, obviously that's really important that you drink just because this is a very help and support focused webinar. Uh, if you have a secret crush on any one of us at any time, or you feel the urge that you have a crush on any one of us, uh, you know, and that can be a platon, you know, any level of crush. It can be an, an intellectual crush. It can be uh, beyond that if you, if you like. It's all good. 
Uh, so any form of a crush, uh, any, any, any feeling state that comes through you in any shape, one shape, way, shape, or form, go ahead and have a have a drink. You know, no one's judging. Uh, if you just call Zach to hear his voice, then you can. I'm sure, it happens. It happens a lot. So <laughs> Zach's got a wonderful voice, and um, I get heavy breathing on the other end sometimes, and nobody's talking. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I call. I usually have to leave a message though because you're really busy. Yeah. Uh, Zach's got a call out to panels from James Young. James, definitely. If Zach misses that, Zach, I'm sure we'll see it. But I'm sure if you email Zach, we'll make sure that get you covered. Yes, we're just very, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, last but not least, uh, I was told in my noon, sem noon seminar that I didn't have enough diagrams. And it was because this is going to be a very heavily PowerPoint focused unfortunately webinar um, and in lazy form, I decided to not, because I couldn't create diagrams on everything. There's so much this that we're gonna cover today. Um, so instead, if you see Katy Perry anywhere throughout this webinar, and she does make an appearance several times, uh, you can drink. So we are, normally we are anti Katy Perry fans today. We are gonna be a very Katy, Katy Perry uh, focused, uh, focused webinar, so if you're, <clears throat> She'll be making some guest appearances today. And uh, DoorDash will be arriving a little bit late today, so we apologize, about 15, 20 minutes late. Um, but I can't remember, what did we order for DoorDash? Uh, we are actually made arrangements with all the local, uh, tonight's Chinese. So we have uh, for, we, uh, used Yelp to find the highest rated Chinese restaurants in your area. So within the next 15, 20 minutes, DoorDash will be arriving. Surely you're welcome. Uh, we ordered some extra fortune cookies too. Good, yeah, wings. Sorry, James. Uh, we will make sure, we will put in the appropriate complaints. All right, how about that time? So we ready to get this thing started? Everyone good on the rolls? Kick it off. Let's okay, start. so here we go. All right, so let's get this, uh, this bad boy started. So a uh, couple of fun, so today, uh, I'll actually just to kind of go back really Oh, I won't. We're going to be talking about support and successful tips and tricks, okay? And actually, today's a pretty cool day because uh, we actually released something brand new on the website. We haven't actually released this publicly. It's not on Facebook. We didn't talk about it. We've only been talking about it within the, within the uh, webinar, but we've actually been spending, geez, we probably started this project about a year and a half ago, and we released a brand new Cobra help portal, right? So if everyone knows some of our user documentation, uh, it was a little bit, you know, dated in some sense, kind of bounced around. And so today we're actually going to be covering a brand new uh, Cobra help portal that I'll actually be showing you guys shortly here. And within the new help portal, we have actually completely rewritten every single one of the user guides on our system, not just for core equipment, but also for things like igniters and also uh, uh, general education documents, checklists, tips, things like that, FAQs. So we'll cover that. Uh, so user guides, FAQs, checklists, and troubleshooting, and help portal tickets uh, also are covered. And hey, look at that. Looks like a little bit of a Katy Perry down there. So oh, six helps, seven helps, and, and a Katy Perry. Seven helps wow. and a Katy Perry. That's practically a full beer. I, I need to refill already. Yeah, that's, yeah, everyone, this is going to be a bad night. So if you're, we normally know that because at the end of the webinar, either people were still intrigued or they all passed out and their computers were just left on. All right, so I'm going to back out of my little PowerPoint presentation here and I'm going to flip right over to our handy dandy Cobra Firing Systems website. And so on the website, you'll notice now, this is actually live, so I'm on our live website. So if anyone were to open a web browser right now, you're going to see the exact same thing that I'm looking at. And you'll notice at the top there is the support tab and uh, we have made a couple little changes in here. And one of, the, you'll, one of them you'll see here at the top is it says help portal, okay? And there's also this, which is a little different now. It says equipment, pre-show, and driver on checklists and show troubleshooting. All of these three links go to a certain section of the help portal. Uh, and I will go to the help portal right now. So what you're seeing in front of you, this is a brand new uh, user interface as of today, and uh, this is now live to our customers. And the whole entire goal of our help portal 
is to centralize this within our entire support infrastructure. Okay, so if you've noticed over the last year, year and a half that we've introduced a lot of wonderful things, not just uh, tools, but also uh, uh, new people such as Zach, uh, Anvar, if you haven't uh, spoken or emailed with Anvar, he's a new member of our team. Um, and actually, we have a whole back-end support system uh, technology that integrates a lot of things together. And one of those is the help portal. And so on the help portal, the idea is that built into this, we have user guides, we have FAQs, general education documents, we've got uh, checklists of all sorts, uh, troubleshooting documents. And on the main search area here is you can pretty much type in whatever you want, right? So if you wanted to ask a certain question and you wanted to search our repository, I think we have at least three to 400 questions. For example, 18M battery life, you could just simply type in whatever question that you have and hopefully, and again, this is the early stages of this uh, portal. However, it is fairly complete. We did a ton of work to fill this thing in uh, throughout the entire team. You can simply click on any of those results, get your answers to those questions, or if you just typed in, you know, say battery life and I hit search, you'll notice that there's a lot of uh, results that can appear. Um, you can click directly into articles. Uh, there's also these little buttons right here, which actually reference specific products and even sections within those products, right? So this would be like the FAQ section of the 18M firing module, right? So in addition to the searching capability of articles, uh, FAQs, we also have this user guides and FAQ section. So this is a section that's a little bit more organized uh, into the different products that we sell. So you'll see here we've got, you know, the kind of the legacy 18R, our 18R2, 18M, different modules. If I kind of scroll down a little bit here, you'll notice that we have, you know, beyond just our core products, we talk a bit about you know, igniters. Uh, we actually have a completely rewritten scripting user guide that you can access. Uh, many of these sections have buttons for FAQs. Some of them don't have user guides currently, like Cobra Show Creator just takes you right to our Show Creator software, right? Control Panel is really just FAQs right now. So um, some of these things will continue to grow, get more comprehensive, um, but this is a great little, uh, a brand new, you know, versus the PDF documents on our site. This is a brand new, well-organized uh, user guide section. If I click on one, for example, the 18R2 controller, you'll notice in here that each of the user guides has specific chapters. Uh, you can click on any of these, learn about whatever is within that specific chapter. Uh, you could go back to the main user guide and you can access a different chapter and kind of bounce around. So we definitely encourage you to check out the help portal. Again, it's right off our website or you can just go to help.cobrafiringsystems.com. We also have a general education document section. So this is something that we took a first stab at as far as just general education of not just the COBRA products that we're selling, but different concept terms, uh, features that we may employ. You know, for example, if you wanna learn about Signal, you can click on Signal Simplified, and this gives you some educational documents about Signal. It talks about Signal strength, and you know, even talks about different types of materials and, and how mesh works shooting over water, stadium shooting, things of that nature, right? And, uh, you know, or continuity. Um, we talk about firmware, hardware versions, things of that nature. So we're going to continue to grow this area, add more educational topics, uh, but it's a great little research, a resource if you're bored or, or interested in genuinely trying to learn about some of these topics and, and how they kind of relate to COBRA. Uh, the third section here, and this is one of the areas I, that's probably very, uh, it's very, geez, I can't even get words out today. It's probably not utilized as much as it should be, and we absolutely want to encourage the use of this section more. And what these are are essentially checklists, right? And we originally built these actually for, for larger clients. We have many larger customers that, that you know, in many cases do thousand plus shows a year using uh, equipment and they want to make sure that they have so many different operators. And so with their operators, they want to make sure that, that their operators are doing all the right things before the show. So for example, if you've ever done a dry run of a script, you know, uh, you can click on this section and we've actually created a PDF document 
that you can actually print out, right? And you can follow through. And these documents are fairly detailed. So even if you're just following the general high level steps, you'll find them helpful, or you can actually go very specifically into uh, specific steps that we offer. Um, and we've actually designed them so that an operator can actually write down their name, the date, you know, what the information was on their show. And actually some of our corporate customers actually sign off on these, require that their operators sign off on these documents at the end, right? And so we have these checklists, not just for something like a dry run, but we have these checklists also for, oops, clicking on to the wrong places here. We also have these checklists for things like equipment preparation and even annual system maintenance, right? So if you, you know, a lot of people ask, hey, what do I do with my equipment at the end of the year? Um, we provide a fairly comprehensive list of things that you don't have to do, but if you're really super anal about your equipment, you can do all these things and, uh, and you know, that'll just kind of allow your equipment to last throughout the years a little bit better. Um, not that it doesn't already last great within um, in its current state. Uh, last but not least, within the help portal, we have a show troubleshooting section. Within here, this is another great document that you can print out uh, and bring out on a shoot site, um, or again, if you just access it through your phone, uh, it has just a multitude of just common troubleshooting things. So if you're out on a shoot site, you've got an issue, you're seeing an error code, you know, maybe you've got a key switch that broke, or who knows what it is. This document gives you kind of the common types of uh, troubleshooting tips to get to get past those things. Um, of course, you can reach out to us, contact us. I'm going to be talking about that in a second. But for your own personal reference, sometimes it's helpful to have these documents um, you know, to reference on your own. I see a lot of giggling and laughing. I don't know if you guys are... Uh, well, there seems to be an article missing. Uh, when you search, explain to wife, I must buy more, seems to have no results. So should bring that's it on. not in there. Oh, that document. I gotcha. Yep, yep, yep. We will hold on. <laughs> All right, I'll put that one in there. That's a good one. We're here to uh, help. Yes. All right. Uh, okay. So that's uh, that's a great thing. Also, one of the cool things about the help portal is that uh, and I won't belabor this too much, but you know. We do have an area here where you can create a ticket right through the site. Okay, so you can see here, you can go right to the site, you can create an account, you can create a ticket. However, we didn't want to make it so that if you needed to co contact Cobra support, you had to uh, create a ticket, log into a system, right? It's kind of a pain in the butt every time I buy from some company. Now, I have, for every type of product that I purchase, I have to have some website login before I can ask them for help and fill out some complicated form. You know, even though we do have a form, all you have to do is email health at Cobra Firing Systems. If at any point you come back and you uh, want to create an account on our website, all of your tickets are listed nicely within our system, right? So you can always come in through here. You can see any previous communications that we have. You can actually respond to those directly from within this interface. Uh, you can see Zach did a really nice job of helping me out with an audio box question that I had. Um, and you can actually even close these tickets out right from this interface, right? So we have this type of interface if you're interested. If you're not, no biggie, just email us, call us, and we're easy to get a hold of in, in more traditional ways. Cool, all righty. Um, I'm gonna switch back to my PowerPoint. All right, here we go. So new help portal, let's get another little look at Katy Perry, thank you. Excellent. All right, uh, you wanna throw up a general poll, Joel, for us maybe? Or just figuring. Uh, yes, this is a fantastic time. In case anyone needs a refill, you can do that now. I just yes. have a poll just to see, uh, you know, what kind of polls are your favorite. Oh, this is a very intriguing poll. Aerobic poll. An aerobic poll. What is what is an aerobic poll? That, that's like a fancy way of. That's a fancy way of saying stripper pole. Oh, <laughs> well, Katy Perry may be doing. Uh, as soon as I said that, it got like six votes. <laughs> <laughs> I know, aerobic pole. Got Supposed it. Supposed to be one to make sure you guys are on your toes at the first couple were yeah. actual answers, and they just kind of went off the deep end. I think I have a North Pole. Oh, that was horrible. Was that terrible? Moving onward. Okay. 
Ooh, that's gonna be on YouTube. Yeah, we could edit parts out if needed. Terrible. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, oh, and I did. I did. For, I forgot to mention it in the beginning. Yes, colorful, offensive, and pseudo offensive, and other comments are welcome. So you know, feel free to carry. I think that was a very PG rated comment that I made. Very PG. All right, moving on. Uh, well, let's wait and we'll see the results after my. Oh, we're gonna see them now. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I figured the the, aero, the multiple choice and the aerobic pole one. That's, that's no, no question. <laughs> All right. Okay, so email, phone, live, chat, and help portal tickets. Holy cannoli. All right. Uh, email us at help at cobrafiringsystems.com. Uh, you know, you will get a hold of our wonderful support staff, including Zach and Var. If I need to get brought in, I absolutely get brought in. Obviously, if you email directly, sometimes you may find that you'll suddenly get an email from help. That's because sometimes I'll pass certain things on to Zach and, their, and his team because I know that you'll, you'll get a faster response. Um, obviously, you can still call me, uh, but as the company grows, you know, as we have been, it's kind of impossible for me to help everybody. Um, and hopefully, my, you know, I'm trying to spend other time uh, improving different areas of the system and doing fun, fun things like that. Not that support's not fun. I absolutely love it. Uh, you can call us. This is our phone number. Um, one thing I will absolutely state is if you call us and we do not pick up because we're on the phone with another client, leave a message. Absolutely leave a message. Um, and because we're, we're going to go through those uh, kind of systematically and chronologically. And, you know, as Zach, I'm sure will mention, uh, we get back to people really, really quickly. You know, it is absolutely our goal to get back to you as fast as possible. Um, leave a message. And absolutely, with any of your emails or phone, phone calls that you make, uh, make note of your urgency. So if it's really an urgent issue, let us know. You know, and, and urgency is, is in the uh, eye of the beholder. Is that, is that said right? I have no idea. You know, if it's urgent to you, then it's urgent to us, right? So we're not going to judge, you know, your level of urgency. Um, you know, so uh, live chat. We do on our website have a live chat section. So I won't uh, show it too much. But if you go to our website, the lower right hand corner has a neat little button that you can click on for live chat. Uh, Zach and his team monitor that throughout uh, working hours. If you do leave a live chat after hours, uh, it's going to ask a little bot's going to ask you for your email. Once we get that, we will email you back or call you back, depending on what you what you're asking or if you or if you want a phone call or if you're cool with email. Um, and then obviously, Copra help tickets. So we talked a little bit about that within the portal. All right, so let's talk a little bit about. 911 emergency shoot site support, right? Oh my gosh, was that Katy Perry? She loves 911. All right, so <laughs> that was terrible. Uh, what? So what is 911 emergency shoot site support? So some of you may not be familiar with this. Uh, you would be familiar with it if you call our phone number and at the end of our phone number before you leave a message, it always mentions that. But one of the great benefits of being a Cobra customer is that we actually offer a 911 shoot site service. So if you're on a shoot site at night, even if it's a Friday or Saturday night, and you are like freaking out because something's going wrong, you know, uh, and you need help, right? Uh, you don't want to have to, you know, uh, you know, go through the site or you're just like, you need a, a instant emergency support. If you email 911 at cobrafryingsystems.com, um, that will cause for uh, there's actually lights in every one of Zach's ha uh, rooms in his house. They light up and then and they shoot glitter everywhere. So uh, he is uh, he is immediately woken up and uh, and 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 my I also get uh, alerted as well as as well as others within the organization. And we will get back to you very quickly. Um, and it does not stop leaving us alone. So it just literally texts us like nonstop until we we contact you. And so we're we're very good at getting back to you. Um, please, 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 you know, if you can <laughs> try to limit this to emergency, emergency situations, we do get a lot of 911s where people are like, uh, you know, trying to, do, you know, do something, you know, have a, a simple question for something a, a few weeks out, you know, if you can try to respect uh, the, the service, but at the same time, if you need the service, we're there to help. We're always friendly. We're always, um, always there to answer your questions. So really neat service that we like to offer to our clients. Because um, hopefully, as everyone knows, we are really, 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 really big on support. 
Okay, so let's get into some of the meat of it. So what, what I tried to do within this, and, and also I will note that if you have anything to add, and I'm gonna to try to stop in between these sections, so any experiences that you have, tips, tricks, troubleshooting um, that you wanna offer, feel free to toss that out throughout this. I also have a slide at the end where we're just gonna kind of pause and every, anyone through chat can offer any other types of tips or tricks and troubleshooting. So we do wanna to try to make this, you know, really as interactive uh, as possible for you guys. And so this is meant to be for everybody. But we're gonna cover a whole variety of topics. So different topics within signal strength, continuity, scripting design, dead man, power management, the Cobra audio box, uh, firing scripted shows, and also just general, right? General types of things. Oops, sorry, that was my, uh, that was a, uh, from the earlier part of the webinar. So, did you guys hear that? You didn't, okay, good, no. all right. It must have been because I removed that, that, that audio file from my earlier section, all right. Great, so these are the topics that we're gonna cover. Uh, so Joel, do you have a little poll for us on, or no, I'm gonna go through these first, right Joel? Then we're gonna ask the poll, correct? Yes, that sounds great. Sounds good. All right, so some of these are gonna be obvious, some of these aren't gonna be obvious, uh, but module and antenna placement. When you're dropping your modules on a shoot site, always consider where your shooter position is, right? So. I can't tell you how many shoot sites that you go on and there's like a whole series of racks and people put their modules behind the racks, right? And if it's no, and if it's no additional effort, go ahead and place your modules in front of the racks so they have better line of sight to the shooter, right? A very simple thing to do. Again, if it doesn't impact how you're wiring your show or the effort that goes into wiring your show is show, always consider where you're placing your module to obtain the best line of sight. Uh, Cobra does offer, you know, in addition to mesh technology, which we'll talk about in a second, Cobra does offer, offer a booster and a dish. We get the question all the time, what's better, the booster or the dish? Think of it like a, if your antenna is a light bulb. The booster is going to make that light bulb much, much brighter. So if the brightness is the strength of the signal, your shoot field is going to light up with more signal. A dish is kind of like a flashlight, right? The brightness of the bulb stays the same, but allows you to kind of focus that light in a specific direction. The dish is usually normally used for very long distance, like several uh, kilometer distances that you may want to achieve. Uh, the booster is just a great tool for general signal improvement. So for traditional general aerial fireworks, um, I always like to recommend the booster over the dish, um, but they can also be used together for, for long distance directional uh, antenna stuff. Oops, I got mine a little out of order here. That's okay. Mesh and repeating. So along, so mesh within our 5.0 and plus release, uh, if you're not using mesh, it's a great release. Um, we also have our uh, stable release candidate about to come out here but the um, mesh allows all modules to essentially act as repeaters. So that current firmware does, is really kind of a miracle worker when it comes to improving signal. Uh, antenna orientation is also very important. A lot of people don't know it, but the antennas, uh, essentially when they're straight up and down, the antenna is best, uh, the signal is best transmitted kind of as like a dome not sitting around the top of that antenna, right? So if you point the antenna like a gun facing something, uh, that's, that's gonna be the worst area of signal, which is right at the tip. So oftentimes, especially if you're in like a situation where you have a very high altitude setup, you know, you can kind of angle that antenna down and that also improves signal. Again, it's not gonna be like a make or break situation, but the antenna orientation is actually helpful to improving signal. Obviously, raising antennas is something that you can do to uh, improve signal by having that antenna directly on the ground versus being raised up. Raising it up, it actually has a dramatic impact on the signal strength. Uh, and this is, this is kind of not funny, but you can actually fire a module without an antenna. So if you're on a shoot site and you've actually forgotten an antenna, uh, if, you, uh, if you have that antenna and you uh, essentially, I'm sorry, if you don't have that antenna, if that module is close to another module that's acts as a repeater, it can actually get signal from that repeater. Um, in addition, you can get a good solid 100, 150 feet uh, away from the module if it doesn't have an antenna. And also by not having an antenna, you won't actually damage the module. So a lot of people, 
are concerned that you're going to damage the module if you uh, don't have an antenna. That's not the case. Um, and also, lastly, by actually wrapping your module in tinfoil, that will also about triples the, the strength of your signal by wrapping it. And the more tinfoil that you wrap, uh, the better. And we definitely recommend uh, Reynolds Wrap is the is the primary top brand for, for signal improvement with modules. And, and uh, if you didn't notice, Katy Perry was in the end. So uh, Joel, did you have a little poll? I do. It's regarding what you just learned on signal. There are more than one answer here that is not a way to improve signal. So read That's them. right. Right, this, this is a tough one actually. I'm personally stuck between like, there's like maybe one, I'm not sure about, but we'll give everyone a, a few seconds here to, and awesome. I'll, probably let, I'll probably let you post the results of this, Joel, before I jump to the next section. Sure thing, I've also added another poll that we can use later on. Oh, excellent, great. Kind of an impromptu new poll that you just created. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, if you want to interrupt me at any time that you feel that it's appropriate, feel free to do so, Joel. Otherwise, I will personally choose. <laughs> All right. How are those results going? Good enough. We're going to go ahead and stop and share. All right. Uh, that's right. It is true that placing your module on top of firing a kick will not improve your signal. Uh, yeah, that was his Zach suggestion. You failed on that one, Zach. <laughs> well, it's, it kind of will. It won't end well, but it would get it up off the ground. I'm just saying. That, it will that, briefly improve your signal. That's true. Yeah, briefly. yeah, yeah. And um, and we do have a lot of smart clients. The antenna, you're right, that is bad. And and in fact, wrapping your module in tinfoil does not, unfortunately, improve your signal strength. Unfortunately, so that we have very well, smart clients. You talked about it, right? right? What's that? You talked about the antenna, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I said it can fire without it, but it's, yeah, but taking off the antenna is probably not the best thing to do, <laughs> I would say, personally. All right, on, on our way here. Ooh, I'm going to get, okay. A continuity. Okay. Uh, la, 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 la. So this is, I uh, hope you guys can see my, um, sometimes it helps if I actually see. Uh, okay. Can you guys see my video? I don't know how this is showing, hold on. There we go, okay. So folding your wires, I'll just show this briefly. This is what like your wire may look like normally. Folding your wire down like this, right? Before you put it into a speaker terminal, if you're using our onboard cues, obviously using quick plugs, this is different. But if you place this directly into your module, uh, this will improve the contact, uh, improve, you know, improve the contact of the speaker terminal and it will also uh, reduce the amount of copper that is exposed above the speaker terminal, which then reduces the risk that you're gonna have copper over the speaker terminal contacting one another, which would end up creating a false positive for continuity and a short, and if you try to fire a short, it's not gonna fire uh, even though it was showing, showing continuity. So folding the wires, that's a great tip. Uh, don't pinch speaker terminals, and oh, Zach, do you have a module? You can kind of show this, maybe. I've got an ATM sitting around. So what I mean by this is that oftentimes people put the, uh, yep, there we go. See what Zach is doing right there, if you don't have his video camera, is he is pinching the speaker terminals. When you do that and you have uh, wires within there, what it's doing is, is it the, the plastic that's on that hinge eventually will start to weaken and soft, soften and, and then create like a little indent or like a divot. And eventually over time by doing that, you're gonna start having speaker terminals just slowly over time have a tougher time to, to press onto the, the copper wire. So it's by simply folding your wire and allowing the natural uh, spring uh, force to hold that wire in place is the best technique. Uh, we also have this, uh, thank you, uh, credit to Joel and Jonah. Jonah is the hand model, by the way, right? Compliments to Jonah, he is our cover hand model. Very nice, uh, that is Jonah's hand. And he is showing us the, the one and only famous uh, labor intensive, uh, highly subjective and controversial in its use, butterfly wiring technique, uh, which you can use on your modules for uh, creating strain relief and uh, no different than uh, 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 
uh, what is it? The glue, the guy with the head with the helmet and the glue. Zach is ma maintaining the entire weight, which has got to be at least 80 pounds of that module. Uh, bare minimum is being held by that one single butterfly technique. So thank you, Zach. Your arms must be very tired. All right. Uh, so that's the butterfly technique if you want to use it. Uh, we also re recommend that you soak your wires uh, in salt water uh, before your show is as long as you can, right? And then, and then try to alternate in between salt water and air. It's a good technique for ensuring you have good continuity. Uh, blinking, uh, br blinking green, LED, we get this question all the time, oftentimes, mainly on the 18R2, people are like, why is the green LED blinking on my remote, right, when I'm in test mode? And the reason for that is because you have multiple modules on the same channel, right, and that can include not just 18Ms, but a bank of a 36 or a 72M, and you have partial continuity for that queue across those channels, right? So if you had two modules on channel one, one had Q1 wired, one had Q1 not wired, or you had bad continuity on Q1, that LED is gonna blink on the 18R2. If you repeatedly press the test button on that 18R2, it is going to cycle between the addresses of those modules and display on the screen the continuity specifically for that module. So it's not an error, it's, I mean, I guess in some ways you could argue that maybe you did wanna have continuity on one of those channels, but oftentimes it's mainly just to inform you of what's going on. When you arm the unit, that LED will go solid green and will fire just normally. It is a feature, your system is not defective, it's just trying to tell you something. Um, obviously using the control panel makes that a lot easier, but that's the reason for blinking green LEDs. And then last but not least, within continuity, we definitely recommend that you perform local continuity checks safely. So if you have a module or a position with multiple modules, kindly ask everyone in the vicinity to step away, place the key of the module within the test position, and simply look at the module, look what's wired in each queue, press the test button on the module, uh, you know, if it's an 18M, just do it for that module. If it's a 36 or 72M, rotate through the banks and just make sure that everything, as you would expect, is plugged in because oftentimes it's a lot easier to fix that module when you're sitting right next to it versus walking, you know, five, 600 feet back to your shoot position, trying to radio or call someone to resolve it. Most of the time, continuity issues deal with a bad connection and, um, and doing local continuity checks will help save you time on your shoot site. For sure. And uh, the other thing too is when you are performing a teardown event, uh, instead of pulling wires out individually, you can grab all of them and you can spin that module overhead and it uses a special centripetal force uh, function which will cause the speaker terminals to automatically open and the wires to come out. And, your, uh, and anyone in the vicinity can catch your module. All right, do you, have a, do you have a poll, Joel, for this one, I think? Please go to the next slide so they cannot see your responses. Yes, go to the next slide. Very good. I am at scripting design, so okay. go ahead. And As the last one, there are more than one answer here. All right, what are the following are not ways to ensure good continuity? We need, like, the Jeopardy theme music. All right. Uh, uh, these are all on the last slide. Too. I can see the answers live. I don't. I know you guys probably can't. So. Yes. 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 All right. Cool. Well, whenever you're ready, Joel, feel free to publish those results if you feel they're. That's good. Good, good job. Whoever did that, I don't know who did that. That was me. As well. Good job, Zach. All right, how's those results looking? Yes. Ah, pinch speaker terminals, right, soak water. Damn it. All right, well, they're, you, they're smarter than, all right, good, good job, guys. So grabbing all your wires and spinning a module overhead and soaking water, your wires in salt water are bad ideas. They are not good ideas, so we almost, Pull everyone on that one. All right. 
Smart. All right. Uh, scripting design. So let's talk about some tips and tricks of scripting design. Uh, a lot, I've seen a lot, a lot of people like when they script to put modules on the same channel. Um, there are some benefits to that when you're scripting. It makes things a little bit easier sometimes. But generally speaking, when you're scripting, if you can put every module or every bank on its own unique channel, you will thank yourselves greatly when you're performing continuity and signal strength checks on the day of your shoots uh, on, your, on your site, right? Because it's very frustrating and challenging sometimes to have to cycle between all the modules, you know, especially if you don't have a control panel, it can be very difficult. Um, so putting everything on its own unique channel will make your, it should make, especially if you're using a program like Finale, just keep them all separate. It's going to make your life a lot easier. Uh, uh, this is a small tip, the control panel and uh, your script does have a disable firing argument. So if you ever think that there's going to be a situation where you need to disable firing during your show, uh, we cover this, I think, within the control panel and the advanced scripting seminar. We talk a little bit about disable firing. Um, yes, within a future, in, within our 6.0 release, we will support the ability to disable uh, modules, groupings of queues, and positions. Uh, I see Joel's a nice little smile on his face with that one. And uh, if you haven't watched our <laughs> scripting seminar, attend Joel's step scripting seminar. Step scripting is a, is a really awesome, or I'm sorry, not seminar, webinar. So go check out his webinar. I think it's advanced scripting, right? Yes. Uh, and also, right? Yep. Well, anyway, check out the basic and the advanced, but they're definitely both, they're, they're in there. Actually, I think it's the basic, basic uh, seminar that covers that. Uh, when you're firing, you can fire talons and e-matches at the same time on a module. Just make sure you always have a two-second delay in between cues on the same module. So we get this question all the time. Can you fire talons and e-match at the same time on a module? You can, just at least two seconds in between. Um, whenever you are doing a dry run, make sure to wear a wetsuit and place your modules in the bathtub. Very, very important for a dry run, right? So you stay, you stay dry, but only your modules get wet. Right? Is that, the, is that normally the that's, that's, the, that's the, that's what they normally say, right? Good. And uh, make sure you, when you're designing uh, scripts, that you're using high quality audio files, right? Don't go to YouTube. Uh, we covered again this within our scripting uh, seminar, but these are kind of, kind of some of the highlights. So use high quality uh, audio files from, say, iTunes or Amazon is another great source. All right. Uh, any polls, Joel, or you want me to just kind of keep plowing through these guys? Keep on going. Okay, so uh, one of the cool things about the dead man, these are again just fun things. Uh, the dead man, it's a six pin XLR connector, two of those pins, and if you go to our help portal, I believe we have the pin out on there. Uh, two of those pins are two wires that come out. So you could either buy, you could, if you just want to contact us, we can help as far as getting a cable. But two of those pins that come out, uh, actually are responsible for the step function or the step button on the, on the dead man. And we've seen people uh, connect that to like drum pedals, big TNT plungers, all kinds of stuff. So all those wires need to do is just touch and release. And that emulates the, the pressing of the step button on your, uh, on your controller, right? So that's kind of a fun thing with the dead man. The dead man also has a step button on the top. And it also has an alternate button on the top right. So I think the left one's the step, I think the right one is the alternate. And also, always, always, before you use your dead man, make sure to use the uh, NES Contra cheat code to enable the functionality. We've published this below. It's also within our help documentation. So that is the, cheat, that is the uh, <clears throat> keypad cheat code to enable the functionality of the dead man. Very good. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Uh, so let's talk a little bit uh, about, and, and, and again, guys, if you hear, so anyway, interrupt me on Q&A, guys, panelists, anything, or otherwise I'm flying through these. So uh, power management. Uh, we don't really recommend Duracell. Uh, they're going to work, generally speaking. We just see more often with Duracell quality problems where they do show the full voltage, but they don't generate enough current. Uh, oftentimes to fire e-match or, or other types of igniters. So we're definitely, uh, you know, um, even though we do have large quant, all of our profits go to Energizer stock. Um, with the exception of that, we do uh, endorse the Energizer brand. Um, hey there, what's up? Look at that. She just kind of 
popped out of nowhere there, didn't she? All right, damn it. Damn you, Katy Perry, and your, your drinking ways. Just kind of jump out when you don't least expect her. Uh, <laughs> the 1P, 2P swap. So if you, if you are a nine volt battery person, um, if you ever are in a pinch and you do generally believe that your 1P battery is going to uh, uh, run out of juice during your show, you can always go there and swap it with one of your 2P batteries, right? So just take one of the 2P batteries, swap it for the 1P battery. Uh, I don't know, Zach, if you've got that module still handy dandy, or even Joel had one before. I know you. Yeah, yeah mine wasn't good enough, you know, because it didn't. Yeah. Have... <laughs> oh, you didn't have the nine volts. I know Joel's got it, so Joel's going to one up you again. Uh, so Zach is showing off his uh, much nicer lipo battery, and Joel's going to be showing off his. Uh, nine volt. Oh, and he's got a one P in there. That is the position of the one P. He has placed one of the two P's and in record speed, he is now going to have the third, uh, the second two P in there with a smile. Very well done. That's, that's a, a nine out of 10. Okay. He only got an eight out of 10 earlier. So uh, the top one in the center is the one P, the other two are the two P's. The one P is used for operations only. The two 2P batteries are used for firing cues. And the reason that we separated the power system is so that your 2P batteries are firing at full power, even if your 1P battery is depleting and draining itself during the, the time that the module is on. Uh, if you have a low battery on your module, do not swap all of your batteries. No need to do that. Um, sometimes people do that, not required. Um, if your 2P batteries are not an eight or a nine, it does genuinely, it should have some concern. I've been on shoot sites where I've gone out there and it's like a 2P4. I'm like, why is this module on a 2P4? And it's often because they've accidentally swapped the wrong battery at some point and put a dead battery in there. And, and it's kind of like, uh, you know, the, the weakest link in the, in the chain. I know I said that, I botched that. <laughs> if you have two 2P batteries and one of them can't generate much current at all, that can cause for a, uh, uh, the whole, the whole, 2P circuit to, to provide, um, to not provide enough current to fire, properly fire um, an igniter. Um, you should always tongue test all of your batteries before a show. So tongue testing is the uh, recommended Cobra, uh, tech, Cobra uh, technology solution for uh, batteries. The, the, the stronger the zap, the better the battery. So use, use the tongue test technique. Don't trust any of our battery levels, just go with the tongue. The only way to do it. And then also, if you are using external power, uh, the module will always favor the higher voltage. So if you are plugging an external 12 volt power source to your modules, if you have a higher voltage source, for example, our LiPo battery, it's gonna first favor the LiPo before it favors the external power, right? Excellent, excellent. We don't have any polls for power management, do we, Joel? I do not, but I have other polls if you would like. Oh, that's okay. I'll just remind everyone that obviously, our battery levels are quite accurate. So you can definitely still tongue test your model, your batteries though. That's okay, but that was obviously, that was a joke we do not recommend. Well, I guess you could. Hey there, Katie. Somebody said it was for the newbies. For the noobs, there we it's go. It's for the newbies on the shoot site. Yeah, know. yeah, that's true. Like you just kind of open their mouth and they just stand there and you just start, damn it. Uh, yeah, you want to throw a poll up there so we can all enjoy Katie's, uh, Katie's chest area producing large amounts of sparks as she's singing for us right now. Okay, this is just a general poll. Have you ever, answer all that apply. All right, have you ever lost your keys, forgot to bring? <laughs> I go for option five. <laughs> uh, good ones. All right. Well, I'll let that one run, Joel, I guess, while I go through the audio box. So quickly on the audio box, Cobra does support multiple audio boxes from one controller. A lot of people ask that question. So you can control multiple audio sources if you like. Uh, if the audio box ever loses signal, it will continue to play through. It's kind of fun. You can test it. You could literally start your script with the 18R2. Turn off your 18R2 and your audio box will continue to play throughout the entire, uh, the entire song or soundtrack, if you will. 
Uh, yes, we know AA batteries are an absolute hog within the audio box. I, we promise the lipo is coming. Um, but do please, it's a, it's a small amount of money, throw brand new AA batteries into your audio box uh, before your show. In this case, Duracell are just fine. Duracell or Energizer are okay for this. Um, always dry run your audio box fully through. Uh, oftentimes, as we talk about in our audio seminar, uh, sometimes certain songs aren't very loud. And you, if you dry run it, you can make sure that your audio gain is consistent and pleasurable throughout the audio dry run experience. Uh, generally speaking, set your volume to about 80%. It'll give you some up and down. It'll also not drain as much power at that. Uh, so don't feel you always have to jam your audio box to 100%. Uh, lied about the cost of the show. I actually believe that. I believe that. That's funny. That's a good one. I don't know who came up with that one. I think that was Ryan, right? Maybe. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> Surprisingly, embellishing your power resume isn't high on the list. I thought that was going to be. That's probably for the best. Wow. Surprisingly high amount of people. Yeah, good. Who's going oh. to admit to that? Let's be honest. Who's going to? Oh, yeah, that's true. Right. Well, this is an anonymous. Six, six people. That's about it. About it. About <laughs> it. Uh, all right. Those are good. Uh, use multiple outputs at the same time. So you can actually put headphones, like put earbuds on your audio box as this playing through your main sound system better experience. And Katy Perry's fireworks will cause the audio box to self-destruct instantly. So there's actually a special, a very sophisticated sound um, uh, sensing system. And if it does detect any part of that song, it will self-destruct immediately. So more of, it's, more of a, it's more of a suicide, right? Like an audio box suicide is what it goes through. Very good. Uh, and also using a Cobra certified thumb drive. Uh, all new audio boxes ship with this right now, but you can also purchase them on our website. Hey there. Wow. She is just like making her way. Oh, goodness. I'm just getting everybody like going here. So there's Katie. So have a nice little drink. She's, she's holding some balloons for you. So she gets very tired throughout this, uh, this slide. So make sure that you drink for her because she's putting in a lot of effort for you guys. They're very heavy balloons. All right, uh, when you're firing manually, the 18R has a one second delay between cues. So if you do have a legacy 18R, uh, you, when you press that button, you have to wait about a second before you can fire the next one. Uh, the 18R2 can fire those cues as, as fast as you press the buttons, um, including you can fire more than one cue at the same time on the 18R2, which is kind of cool, fun fact. You can actually press a whole more than one button at the same time. Believe it or not, that took a <laughs> lot of time to develop that. Uh, Blinking red LED is the last cue that's fired on the 18R2. Uh, the firing, uh, oh, I did not fix this. Firing module memory <laughs> maintained on all cues. Restarting the remote clears this, not the module. So that was a uh, win on that one. Again, check out our step scripted shows, see Joel's webinar. All right, very good. So firing scripted shows uh, absolutely wait until the module count appears before you start the show very common thing when you are arming your 18r2 it is uploading the script into those modules um, if you start the show before waiting till that module count appears uh, some of those modules may partially fire not fire until they have that script right so it takes you know maybe a second or more per module uh, to get it uploaded but wait for that arm LED to go solid wait for your module count to appear and then go ahead and start your show um, as I believe Johnny asked early on in the webinar, the timing adjustments uh, can be performed by pressing the plus or minus buttons. Those are the little two plus or minus buttons on the bottom of your remote. Um, by pressing minus, it fires it later. It fires later, uh, and by time, excuse me, by pressing plus, it fires um, earlier. And you can go plus or, uh, the. Um, Accuracy is by 0.1 second, so a tenth of a second accuracy. Once you get to one second in either direction, you can go up to 10 seconds in either direction. Um, script count on startup. Uh, we actually have a whole startup sequence in our new help portal system, so you can check out all the information that displays on your units during the startup sequences. One of them is the amount of scripts that you have loaded. Um, also note that when you do load a script onto your remote, it will clear out all previous scripts, right? So anytime, so you don't have to manually, a lot of people like to manually clear the script before they load a new one. You do not need to do that, it's done automatically. 
Um, you can pause and resume your show. Uh, disarming your remote does not pause it. It straight up disarms and stops your script, kind of as if you like stopped uh, an audio file. Uh, if you pause, it maintains your position. You can press resume to continue going. Uh, the control panel does have a jump feature, so you can actually jump to a specific section of your show if you do like. Within that, that's another neat little tip that we have. And moving on, I believe this is our last uh, slide that you guys have to hear my voice. <laughs> uh, don't kill yourself finding solutions. Email us or call us. We're super happy to help. Sometimes people are like, I just spent the last three hours trying to reprogram my module. You know, if you get stuck on something, we don't want you to have an unpleasant experience with us, right? We don't want you to feel like you killed yourself. Don't feel uh, bad bothering us. That's what, when you pay us money for modules and other equipment, um, that's what we do. This is our job. <laughs> We're here to help you. So don't kill yourself. Try to, you know, reach out to us so you can have as pleasant of an experience as possible. Um, we do have a pretty substantial Facebook group page of, uh, you know, around almost 5,000 members. Um, so people make posts to that every single day, all kinds of stuff. Uh, use that to your advantage for whatever you want. Um, we do now have, of course, I did a terrible job of editing this after my early morning webinar. We do have an FAQ and online searchable user guide within our website now. Um, we absolutely encourage you to join your local pyro club. Uh, there's pyro clubs all around the nation. We do have a listing of them. Uh, if you go to our website, I believe it's in the more section and it's uh, called Club Cobra. And we do have listings of pyro clubs. Absolutely encourage them. If you're not sure, uh, go to our Facebook group page, ask. I'm from here. Do you know of any pyro clubs that shoot Cobra? And most of them do. What's so funny? <laughs> Anyway. Chat. Sorry, we're just it's chatting. Okay. That's all right. I know. I'm, I don't get to share in all the chat humor. I'm jealous. Uh, and oh, have fun. There go. There's Katie there. Drink. So have fun. Keep calm. Uh, we are on your side. So we are on your side. We are part of your team. Let us help you. We want your show to be successful, enjoyable, pleasurable. We want you to to be, you know, we want a loyal customer, and in order to obtain loyal customers, we want to be as, as helpful as humanly possible. And and we, we, it makes our lives happier when we hear that you had a great show and that you were successful, because that's what that's the purpose of of our company is to make equipment that shoots pyrotechnics, right? Excellent. So. Right, you guys are the most important. So we did, thank you, Jonah. This was a great suggestion after our noon webinar. Um, if there's any tips that you guys wanna add into the chat, uh, feel free to uh, throw those out there. Uh, if not, that's okay too. Um, but I'm trying to think if I had any other slides after this. I don't, no more Katy Perry. Uh, well, I have another poll. Now this yes, one was poll. created on the fly. We talked about Cobra 911 earlier. So I've created a poll on what is a good reason to call Cobra 911. Good, good. I want to hear the next voice. <laughs> is that like an Akon reference? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so long. Um, Reporting criminal uh, activity. I'm not gonna shoot <laughs> I like the lonely one. I'm just lonely. I was the Ryan that said I'm lonely. I put the oh so lonely. In That's okay. We we it would be good if like we ranked these like 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 if someone called us and just said that they're lonely. I think I'd be we'd be okay with that, right? Yeah, I'd be okay. I I, I always talk to people, so yeah, that's true. We'd be okay with that. Um. All right. Well. So I think what we'll do is, is it, uh, we, we, we may not have a lot of Q&A for this. I see that there's a couple. Oh, right. Well, let's hear a look at these results. True. Lonely. Most of the answers got it right. They did. They did. But you can still call us for the other ones. Not all the time, but a couple of times. I, like if you, definitely not the last one. That's, uh, yeah, don't call us if you have criminal activity. We're probably not interested in that. I'm like, just seeing only that. seven people got it right, but okay. Oh, I think that's... depending on where you are, your show might be the criminal activity. So, <laughs> that. 
Um, Jason, I can't teleport a key, but I can tell you how to hotwire it. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's what, here's what I'm thinking we'll, we'll do, unless there's any objections from panelists or anyone else. Why don't we skip the formal Q&A because we probably don't have, I mean, we just covered like a bunch of like general support stuff. So what we'll do is we can kind of give our thanks and everything to everybody and then we can jump into more of like our after hours Q&A, right? And we'll just like answer general questions, including a few of these that are listed up here right now. And um, so if anyone wants to hang out, more than welcome to. Um, if not, that's cool. Have a great night. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for all of our panelists for being a part of uh, this, this, this webinar. And we always enjoy these and look forward to future ones as well. And um, if we don't see any of the you individuals who talk to anyone who are attending this webinar until the 4th of July or Canada Day from our northerly, friendly northerly neighbors, uh, um, have a wonderful and safe 4th of July Canada Day or whatever you are celebrating.